The stock market was impervious to all shocks. Nothing could touch it. Nothing could bring it down. The Fed was in control, they said. In 2019, they were cutting interest rates, three times to be exact. But not because there was an issue, only for insurance purposes. Then came 2020. This time they had an emergency meeting and cut interest rates. Not because there was a problem, but just in case there was a problem in the near future. Right, we believe you. Don't worry. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. If you stay with me in this video, you are going to learn exactly what's going on every step of the way. I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve for the most part. We're going to look at what's happening with yields. I'm going to talk about interest rates and everything in between. Let's begin by taking a look at the markets themselves. Here we go with the Dow Jones down 785 points, and this is huge. We saw yesterday how it rose dramatically, approximately 1,300 points on the way up, and it lost much of that the following day. I just checked the pre-market, and it looks like the markets are expecting to go higher another 300 points tomorrow. So we've got a wild set of trading days that are following each other. It has been chaotic. It has been volatile. The VIX still remains elevated at approximately 37. So I'm going to see what occurs in the next few trading days. Of course, I will bring you all that information you need to know. This is the statement directly from the Federal Reserve. They called an emergency meeting and they reduced interest rates. You can see the half percentage point drop to one to one and a quarter percent. This is the range that we are now in. So understand what that means. They have only so much room to go down at this point. It was at 1.5 and now the lower range is at 1%. This is extremely low on a historic level, but of course it has to go lower. There's already demand for it to fall even further. There is the expectation that at their March meeting in the next couple of weeks that they will drop interest rates yet again. One thing that I wanted to point out at this time is the fact that they've been cutting by 25 basis points every single time. On the way up, increasing by 25 basis points. There's only been a few moments where they actually did so by 50 basis points or more, and this is one of those times. So you could see how much they were really trying to put forth this emergency measure. They did it, and unfortunately, the markets didn't like it. That must have really screwed with their heads, but we'll see what happens over the next day. And, and few days as the market starts to digest this information. This is the implementation note directly from the Federal Reserve's own website. So if you want to know what they plan on doing specifically, then check this out. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. You're going to fall asleep and I have a lot to cover here today. But essentially, once again, they are mentioning April 2020, at least April 2020, where they're going to be doing their repurchase operations as we expect. Essentially, everything is status quo. They're going to be continuously printing and so on. This just shows you that they are decreasing the primary credit rate to 1.75%. That's a half percentage point decrease. So they're trying to make it easier on multiple levels, but of course everybody is focused on the Fed funds rate for obvious reasons. From the Treasury's website, you can see the statement of the G7 finance ministers and central bank governors. I told you this was coming. Now we have the info. Apparently, it wasn't good enough. This wasn't what they were expecting because they didn't make official statements as to what their actions would be. They simply said that they would be there to act as appropriate. They're going to be there to support the economies and so on. That's largely what it says. That wasn't enough. The markets didn't like that as well. I have been covering the repo crisis since the day it began, September 17th. I've been showing you all of the data as often as was necessary, and now we have a record high. So as you see, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates, 50 basis points. On top of that, $120 billion in the repo market. We are looking at the term repos oversubscribed. I'll show you all the charts that are related to this. These are extreme levels that are happening right now, but what are they focused on? Is real estate? state really going to go up higher? That's what I'm seeing in articles all over the place. Are we looking at what the next tech stock is? When is the appropriate time to buy back in? There are some serious things that are fundamentally not right about this financial system and we need to watch out because we've gone from cracks to chasms and they will take everybody and their 401k and their pension fund, their retirement accounts with it. 
From the Wall Street Journal, Fed sees huge demand for repos. Tuesday operations totaled $120 billion. Big banks' demand for temporary liquidity exceeds limit. We're talking about repo operations coming at a time when everybody's forgotten about it. It's old news. Forget that. I'm not interested in it. And yet the demand is clearly there. You and I might not care about it because it doesn't affect our pocketbooks directly. But when you start to break this all down, yes, it is important. Yes, it does matter. Fed overnight repo operation oversubscribed. You could see this right here. The Fed tendered $100 billion of temporary funds in return for high quality collateral like treasuries and mortgage backed bonds with $108 billion of bids offered for the available funds. The longer term 14 day repo operation of $20 billion was oversubscribed by 3.5 times. I'll show you the chart in a second. This was supposed to be long gone by now and there is saying, well, we're going to get rid of this in January. We're going to get rid of this in April. And how many people out there actually believe that this is going to be the case? April 2020, this is going away. I'm not so sure about that. This is the New York Fed overnight repo value accepted right up at the top, the highest level they've ever seen since the beginning. Since September 17th, we have watched this go up and down and surely there are variances, but in this case here, the highest ever coming in on the same day as we see a 50 basis point drop in the Fed funds rate. New York Fed term repo operations, you can see as I showed you a moment ago, 3.5 times oversubscribed. This is the demand that cannot be resolved simply by lowering the Fed funds rate. There's something broken. It's still a problem. It's been months and months and months. And we're going to get into September of 2020. It's going to be a year of this going on. And the Federal Reserve is still going to be sitting there sucking their thumbs. This was a good chart, the Fed rate moves. You can see how it has happened over the years. So starting from when they were increasing all along the way during the housing crisis, we saw this massive boom. They were bringing interest rates up and up and up in a slow and steady fashion. It was very predictable. And then it got to, let's say, 5.3% or so. They kept it there for a while. And then they realized, oops, we're in a recession now. Need to bring them down rapidly. During this period, there were only a few moments in which they had their unscheduled decisions. So think about it. All of these dots all the way up, they're all yellow dots and that's a regular meeting. But the red dot is an unscheduled decision. And you could see one right here, one right here, and one right here. Three moments throughout 2007 to 2009. And we just had one of those right here right now in 2020. They're telling us that everything is fine. Everything is strong. Everything is fantastic. The economy is good. The markets are good. The job market is good. But we're acting as if it's a crisis. We are acting exactly like we did last time, except no, you don't have any reason to worry. If anybody believes this, my goodness, I can't understand why I'm even wasting my breath. This is a breakdown of the different moments in which they were cutting interest rates with unprecedented levels. The collapse of Lehman Brothers brought on a 50 basis point cut in the Fed funds rate. Understand that that was the pivotal moment. The Lehman Brothers moment was so serious, they cut interest rates by 50 basis points. Well, is it a coincidence that they did so at this time? 50 basis points. Now look at this. 2019, I talked about this in the introduction. 2019, they decided to cut interest rates three times. All right. Now 2018, they were increasing interest rates. We get to 2019, they cut interest rates three times. Each one of those was just an insurance policy. We're going to cut interest rates. Everything is fine though. Don't worry. Don't panic. Now they cut interest rates in 2020, a total of one time so far. But when you think about it, if you had 25 basis point cuts, it would really be more like two. So if you want to think of that as four or five cuts over the last while, we're talking about an unprecedented move that's taken taking place today. Interest rates have moved down considerably over the last year, and this isn't just a mid-cycle adjustment. They're getting rid of that from their language that they're using in all of their statements, in all of their meetings. That's gone. They told you it was just a mid-cycle adjustment, but of course it cannot be. One of the reporters brought this up and it was kind of sidestepped, but essentially Powell said that, you know what, we'll see what happens at the time. When they asked him about, are you going to be able to increase 
increase interest rates if this blows over and everything's totally fine? Are you going to be able to get to that point where you can increase the rates? And of course, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We know what's happening. Interest rates will have to go to 0%. And I've got some big news for you today. If you stuck with me this far into the video, I've got something so huge. Nobody else is covering it out there. I want you to know about it. Directly from the Cleveland Fed, this right here needs to be understood by everybody, not just investors, but everybody top to bottom. So let's take a look here. Real interest rates are expected to remain lower than in past decades. If so, this means that there will be less room for monetary policymakers to cushion against negative economic shock by lowering its policy rate and a higher likelihood that the policy rate will hit its effective lower bound more frequently. In this case, tools including forward guidance and balance sheet policies such as long term asset purchases will need to be used more often. Here we go, directly from the Cleveland Fed's own website. They will need to print more money and do it more often, and interest rates will find the bottom, 0%, more often as well. In past recessions, the FOMC has reduced the federal funds rate by 5 to 6 percentage points. With interest rates expected to stay low, that policy space will not be available. Moreover, in some economic models, the proximity to the effect of lower bound on nominal interest rates can impart a downward bias to inflation, making it harder for central banks to hit their inflation targets. Essentially, what they're saying is we messed up, we screwed up this system, and now we're going to be printing a hell of a lot more money. This is what I've been trying to tell you for so long. I've been trying to show you the data. I covered it in my books. I am talking about this over and over and over and over again, and we are seeing the massive disruptions that are appearing in this financial system that could come from one way could come from another. But all I know is that these central banks created this crisis. Never forget that. But the big news is in the bottom paragraph. Let me get to it. No more ranting. Here we go. The FOMC did not use negative interest rates during the Great Recession and its aftermath, but our review is open-minded and we are taking a look at the experience of other central banks that have used negative interest rates to address low inflation and low growth. There it is, the Money GPS subscribers. You heard it here first. The Federal Reserve is officially beginning to look at negative interest rates. They've talked about it before and always said, no, we are not doing this. Jerome Powell has stated publicly, we are not going to negative interest rates. Now we have it directly from the Fed's own website that they are beginning to look into this. We need to understand how this will be implemented and of course the repercussions of such a policy. Look at Japan, look at Europe, it's bad for both. And this of course would be detrimental to the United States because this is seen as the safe haven. This is where the money is going and that's partly because of the fact that, hey, there's actually a return, there's actually yield on what they can provide. Suddenly that changes, it's going to be massive for the whole world, not in a good way. 10-year treasury yield falls below 1% for the first time after the Fed slashes rates. This is coming after we see the 50 basis point cut and you saw the result of that in the bond market taking a beating an absolute beating in a way because you're seeing a lot of individuals out there and the way that they perceive these investments safety and security as as always of the utmost importance despite what we see with the retail community and of course buying up their tesla and their amazon shares through the Robinhood app i always pick on them of course but the the point I'm trying to make here is that when you look at the bond market, you get a very different signal than what you get when you look at a certain handful of stocks. That's the point I'm trying to make. Just recently, we had the yield curve inversion, and now the steepening has begun and accelerated today because of that 50 basis point cut of the Federal Reserve. They've been messing around big time with interest rates as a result of all of their activities with the repo operations, with the printing of the money, QE4, and every other activity that they're doing behind the scenes. This thing has been going all out of whack, and we can see right here, again, the signal has been triggered. It's not when the yield curve actually inverts, but it's when it comes back up. This happened previously, and there's a number, I can't remember how long it has to be in the inversion mode. It was already triggered previously. On top of everything we've seen with interest rates and, and what they've done, we know what's going on. Bank stocks again got beaten down today, just showing you in terms of a percentage all down in the red. There's no doubt about it. 
Same situation with the S&P Airlines Index. For obvious reasons, this has dropped like a rock. Josh Brown calls the Fed's rate cut ill thought out and done just to make people feel better. If you look at the first point, he's quoted here. If you want it to have a psychological impact, then make it meaningful. Do it with some bombast. This was very ill thought out. I don't know what they felt they needed to do it right this minute. And it's a very good point he's trying to make here because why did it need to be an emergency meeting when in two weeks from now, you're going to have a scheduled meeting? Right now, you do it at this point. You scare people. You scare the markets. You make them think that there's something going on. Even Jim Cramer had something to say about that, which I, if I have time, I'm going to cover that in a second here. But I just want to acknowledge that because the emergency makes you think, oh my goodness, we're having another Lehman Brothers moment, doesn't it? Australia cut interest rates as well. I know I heard about this from my subscribers immediately after posting yesterday's video. They cut interest rates down to 0.5%. It was at 0.75%. They are near rock bottom, record low interest rates today. But don't worry, there is no crisis. There is no reason to worry. Everything is just fine. The same situation is expected with Canada and at the time you're watching this video, it may have already happened. They are going to have a meeting, the Bank of Canada, and it is largely expected that they will cut interest rates. Though they have been waiting off on that for quite some time, now would be the moment in which they probably do cut, even if it's a quarter of a percent. Regardless, they seem to be following along with the other global central banks right now at this time. Just one more point I wanted to make is the CNBC article, and they mentioned this. I just wanted to make sure that I touched on it. This type of panicky move when the Fed has only four more rates to cut, I believe that's the exact opposite of what they were trying to do. Think about that, of course. We have the Federal Reserve right now with this limited room to move down. They took away some of that, not just 25 basis points, but of course, 50 basis points. They could have done 25 and in two weeks done another 25, maybe that would have been the better option but this right now they're going to be disappointed if that march meeting comes around and they don't cut again so many have expected that march meeting we're going to see another cut what do you think the world bank is getting in on the fun and you could see that they announced up to 12 billion dollars in immediate support i told you the imf the world bank they're getting in on it and here we have the official statement coming from them there's money coming from all directions going towards this right now we are seeing it on every single level but certainly the central banks are in focus this article here is just basically talking about Jim Cramer. I like to focus on him, not because of the whole Bear Stearns issue and everything, although it is funny, but what I like to focus on him for is because if you see the trading floors around the United States, around Canada and other places in the world, they've got Jim Cramer on TV. When he's on, they're watching or they're listening to it more likely. So this gives you the mentality of the traders and what they're thinking about, what's on their mind, either consciously or subconsciously. Essentially what he said right here in these bottom two paragraphs, quote, it makes me feel, wow, the weakness must be much more than I thought. I've been trying to be bullish, but I can't. So essentially, he's worried that they're cutting 50 basis points. Why are they doing an emergency meeting and everything like this that we talked about here today? And in this case, I actually agree. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit that one button on your screen, you become part of the 10%. That's right, only 10% of people actually appreciate the information. So I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, about selling online, this course is free. It gives you the step-by-step. -step. It's a comprehensive course, yet it doesn't cost you $1,000. doesn't cost you $2,000. I made it for my subscribers specifically because of all these other people ripping you off. This one is at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to know about the fundamentals of the financial system, how to actually ask the right questions if you have a financial advisor, how to not get ripped off, all of those details will be learned in these two books here. Do you have the courage to read a book? My goodness, I must be dating myself. Nobody likes to read these days anymore. Check them out, link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, moneygps.com. Do you want the how-to and solutions? Well, then I got the playlist for you. It's actually called How-to and Solutions. I created the videos in here, hours and hours and hours of content. Good stuff for you to listen to. Check it out. See you there.